Welcome back. How are you today? Okay. My attempt to trying to catch up. I've already done today's reading. So then now I'm going to go back to June 3rd where I left off to start catching up with that reading. Uh, June 3rd's reading is 2 Samuel 18, 19 through 1939. That's chapter 18, verse 19 through chapter 19, verse 39. John 13, 21 through 38. And Psalm 89, 7 through 13. I give you a new law. You are to love each other. You must love each other as I have loved you. John 13, 34. I have a very hard time with that. Just going to be real. How do we know how to love? We learn from Jesus. The master had been with his disciples for three years when he spoke these words, and they had seen his love in action. We see it, too, in God's word and in the lives of faithful believers. Um, I don't see it very much in today's world. Um... That's one, that's a hard one for me. And it's hard to treat people with God's love when everyone is out to get something from you or they're just nasty, um, not nice, mean, hateful, miserable within themselves. It's very draining. It's, I try every day, every day, every day I try. We can take what we know and follow Jesus. I do that. I do that. Living out the words he spoke and good examples we have seen. That's why we are a work in progress. What are your top three priorities today? What's on your schedule to-do list? What do you want to remember from June 3rd, 2022? <clears throat> what are your reflections on our Bible reading? How are you doing on your healthy journey? Try molasses in your coffee. I still have it on the side of my coffee. Okay, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace. We come to you today with humble hearts and humble minds. Holy Spirit, we invite you in to do what only you can do. Show us your ways. We love you, Lord. Bless this time that we have with you and your word. We desire to grow closer to you and to be more like you. Let us be the light. Let us show people your love. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, amen. Second Samuel eighteen nineteen. Don't touch that molasses sign. Second Samuel 18, 19. Through 1939. Right there. 
<clears throat> now, Ahimaaz, son of Zodak, said, Let me run and take news to the king that the Lord has delivered him from the hand of his enemies. You are not the one to take the news today, Joab told him. You may take the news another time, but you must not do so today. Because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to a Cushite, go tell the king what you have seen. The Cushite bowed down before Joab and ran off. Ahimez, son of Zodak, again said to Joab, come what may, please let me run behind the Gushite. But Joab replied, my son, why do you want to go? You don't have any news that will bring you a reward. He said, come what may, I want to run. So Joab said, run. Then Ahimaaz ran by way of the plain and outran the Cushite. While David was sitting between the inner and outer gates, the watchman went up to the roof of the gateway by the wall. As he looked out, he saw a man running alone. The watchman called out to the king and reported it. The king said, if he is alone, he must have good news. And the man came closer and closer. Then the watchman saw another man running and he called down to the gatekeeper, look, another man running alone. The king said, he must be bringing good news too. The watchman said, it seems to me that the first one runs like Ahimez, son of Zadok. He's a good man, the king said. He comes with good news. Then Ahimez called out to the king, all is well. He bowed down before the king with his face to the ground and said, praise be to the Lord your God. He has delivered up the men who lifted their hands against my Lord, the king. The king asked, is the young man Absalom safe? Ahimez answered, I saw a great confusion just as Joab was about to send the king's servant to me, your servant, but I don't know what it was. The king said, stand aside and wait here. So he stepped up aside and stood there. Then the Cushite arrived and said, my Lord, the king, hear the good news. The Lord has delivered you today from all who rose up against you. The king asked the Cushite, is the young man Absalom safe? The Cushite replied, may the enemies of my Lord and the king of all who rise up to harm you be like that young man. The king was shaken. He went up to the room over the gateway and wept. As he went, he said, oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died instead of you, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Joab was told the king is weeping and mourning for Absalom. And for the whole army, the victory that day was turned into mourning because on that day the troops heard it said, the king is grieving for his son. The men stole into the city that day as men steal in who are ashamed when they flee from battle. The king covered his face and cried aloud, O oh, my son Absalom, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Then Joab went into the house to the king and said, Today you have humiliated all your men who have just saved your life and the lives of your sons and daughters and the lives of your wives and concubines. You love those who hate you and hate those who love you. You have made it clear today that the commanders and their men mean nothing to you. I see that you would be pleased if Absalom were alive today and all of us were dead. Now go out and encourage your men. I swear by the Lord that if you don't go out, not a man will be left by you, with you by nightfall. This will be worse for you than all the calamities that have come upon you from your youth until now. So the king got up and took his seat in the gateway. When the men were told the king is sit sitting in the gateway, they all came before him. Meanwhile, the Israelites had fled to their homes. Throughout the tribes of Israel, the people were all arguing <clears throat> with each other, saying, the king delivered us from the hand of our enemies. He is the one who rescued us from the hand of the Philistines. But now he has fled the country because of Absalom.
and Absalom, who we anointed to rule over, over us, has died in battle. So why do you say nothing about bringing the king back? King David sent his message to Zadok and Abathar, the priests. Ask the elders of Judah, why should you be the last to bring the king back to his palace? Since what is being said throughout Israel has reached the king at his quarters, you are my brothers, my own flesh and blood. So why should you be the last to bring back the king and say to Amasa, are you not my own flesh and blood? May God deal with me, be it ever so severely, if from now on you are not the commander of my army in the place of Joab. He won over the hearts of all the men in Judah as though they were one man. They sent word to the king, return you and all your men. Then the king returned and went as far as the Jordan. Now the men of Judah had come to Gilgal to go out and meet the king and bring him across the Jordan. Shimei, son of Gira, the Benjamite from Bahiram, hurried down with the men of Judah to meet King David. With him were a thousand Benjamites, along with Ziba, the steward of Saul's household, and his 15 sons and 20 servants. They rushed to the Jordan, where the king was. They crossed at the ford to take the king's household over and to do whatever he wished. When Shimei, son of Gira, crossed the Jordan, he fell prostrate, prostrate before the king and said to him, May the Lord not hold me guilty. Do not remember how your servant did wrong on the day my Lord, the king, left Jerusalem. May the king put it out of his mind, for I, your servant, know that I have sinned, but today I have come here as the first of the whole house of Joseph to come down and to meet my lord, the king. Then Abishai, son of Zariah, said, Shouldn't Shimei be put to death for this? He cursed the Lord's anointed. David replied, What do you and I have in common, your sons of Zariah? This day you have become my adversaries. Should anyone be put to death in Israel today? Do I not know that today I am king over Israel? So the king said to Shimei, you shall not die. And the king promised him an oath. Mephibosheth, Saul's grandson, also went down to meet the king. He had not taken care of his feet or trimmed his mustache or washed his clothes from the day the king left until the day he returned safely. When he came from Jerusalem to meet the king, the king asked him, why didn't you go with me? Mephibosheth. He said, my lord, the king, since I, your servant, am lame, I said, I have my donkey saddled and will ride on it so I can go with the king. But Sheba, my servant, betrayed me. Ziba, but Ziba, my servant, betrayed me. And he has slandered your servant to my lord, the king. My lord, the king, is like an angel of God. So do whatever pleases you. All my grandfather's descendants deserve nothing but death from my lord, the king. But you gave your servant a place among those who eat at your table. So what right do I have to make any more appeals to the king? The king said to him, Why say more? I order you and Ziba to divide the fields. Mephibosheth said to the king, Let him take everything now that my lord the king has arrived home safely. Barzillai, the Gileadite, also came down from Rogalim to cross the Jordan with the king and send him on his way from there. Now Barzillai was a very old man, 80 years of age. He had provided for the king during his stay in Mahanaim, for he was very a, well, a very wealthy man. 
the king said to Barzillai, cross over with me and stay with me in Jerusalem and I will provide for you. But Barzillai answered the king, how many more years will I live that I should go up to Jerusalem with the king? I am now 80 years old. Can I tell the difference between what is good and what is not? Can your servant taste what he eats and drinks? Can I still hear the voices of men and women singers? Why should your servant be an added burden to my Lord of the King? Your servant will cross over the Jordan with the King for a short distance. But why should the King reward me in this way? Let your servant return that I may die in my own town near the tomb of my father and mother. But here is your servant Kimham. Let him cross over with my lord, the king. Do for him whatever pleases you. The king said, Kim Ham shall cross over with me, and I will do for him whatever pleases you. And anything you desire from me, I will do for you. So all the people crossed the Jordan, and then king, and the king crossed over. The king kissed Barzillai and gave him his blessing, and Barzillai returned to his home. Amen. John 13, 21 through 38. I love you. A great workout. You got that? Uh, John 13, 21 through 38. <clears throat> good morning good morning <laughs> he's such a good boy he's such a good boy My lap was big enough, he'd lay on my lap right here, right now. <laughs> Both of us would be uncomfortable. He's about, well, he's probably around 50 pounds. I haven't weighed him lately, but yeah, he's about 50 pounds. <laughs> Solid 50 pounds. All right. John 13, 21 through 38. That will conclude John 13. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another. At a loss to know which of them he meant, one of them, the disciples who Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter mentioned to, his, to this disciple and said, ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. What you are about to do, do quickly, Jesus told him. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the feast or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out, and it was night. Verse 31. Let me double check and make sure he has uh, the door open so he Dookie can go outside if he needs to go potty. Boy. Sorry about that. 
wasn't sure if Troy left the back door open in case Dookie needs to go potty. <clears throat> okay. Verse 31. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, will you really lay down your life for me? I tell you the truth before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Amen. Psalm 89, 7 through 13. Psalm 89, 7 through 13. In the council of the Holy Ones, God is greatly feared. He is more awesome than all who surround him. O Lord God Almighty, who is like you, you are mighty, O Lord, and your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule over the surging sea. When its waves mount up, you still, still them. You crushed Rahab like one of the slain. With your strong arm, you scattered your enemies. The heavens are yours and yours also the earth. You founded the world and all that is in it. You created the north and the south. Tabor and Hermon sing for the joy at your name. Your arm is endued with power. Your hand is strong. Your right hand exalted. Amen. All right, we're one step closer to catching up. That was June 3rd, 2022. And let me finish with Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. <coughs> his faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining me today while we're catching up.
from when I was sick. And we will continue to forge forward in catching up. I hope that you have a blessed day and I hope that you have many opportunities to bless other people. Thanks for joining me. See you tomorrow.